fade in on a girl with a hunger for fame, and a face and a name to remember. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 things you didn't know about Marilyn Monroe. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. We're taking a look at fun facts about the screen legend and cultural icon. I've heard of affairs that are strictly platonic, but diamonds are a girl's best friend. Number 10. Joe DiMaggio remained devoted even after they divorced. In between her marriages to James Doherty and Arthur Miller, Monroe tied the knot with retired baseball player Joe DiMaggio. The couple would divorce after only nine months. With the tipping point in their allegedly unhappy relationship following the iconic shot of Monroe in a white dress over a subway grate. Ooh, do you feel the breeze from the subway? Isn't it delicious? According to reports, DiMaggio physically assaulted Monroe, and she would later file for divorce and cite mental cruelty as the grounds for terminating their marriage. Despite this, the two rekindled their friendship, and some reports indicate that DiMaggio was planning to ask Monroe to remarry him just before she was found dead. DiMaggio arranged her funeral, and he continued to honor Monroe's memory afterwards, regularly sending roses to her resting place for 20 years. Number 9. She tried to have a child. The baby! I can't lose the baby! Go on. By the late 50s, Monroe appeared to have the whole package. But something was still missing from her life, and all the diamonds in the world couldn't fill the void. During her marriage to Arthur Miller, she desperately tried to get pregnant, but each attempt ended in heartbreak. Are you blaming me? Nobody wanted that baby more than I did. In 1957, she endured an ectopic pregnancy that had to be terminated, which was made all the more tragic by the fact that Monroe had to smile for the press who hounded her. Monroe was also pregnant while shooting Some Like It Hot, but suffered another miscarriage. Passing away just a couple of years later, Monroe never got to fulfill her dream of becoming a mother. Number 8. Her wardrobe is worth a fortune Throughout her career, Monroe donned some of the most iconic outfits in pop culture history. In 1962, she serenaded President John F. Kennedy with a legendary rendition of Happy Birthday, wearing a rhinestone-encrusted dress. Happy Birthday! The sheer gown was auctioned off in 1999 for $1,267,500, making it the most expensive piece of clothing ever sold at the time. This record would be surpassed when Monroe's The Seven Year Itch Dress sold for $4.6 million in 2011. Then in 2016, the Happy Birthday Mr. President dress went up for auction yet again, this time selling for a whopping $4.8 million. As Sugarcane would likely put it, Monroe's wardrobe must be worth its weight in gold. Number 7. She was drastically underpaid for her Playboy photos. These are really collectible. I mean, if you collect Playboys, this is the one everybody wants. Marilyn Monroe is regarded as one of the most recognizable sex symbols of all time. Back in 1949, when she was struggling to hit it big, though, a 22-year-old Monroe posed nude for photographer Tom Kelly. While these shots were originally used in a calendar, they wouldn't attract widespread attention until 1953. By then, Monroe was one of the hottest stars in Hollywood, making her an ideal candidate for the first issue of Playboy magazine. In addition to featuring Monroe on the cover, Hugh Hefner purchased the rights to her nude photos, and used one of them as the centerfold. Playboy took off as a bestseller, but Monroe was only paid $50 for taking it off. Number 6. The Kennedy Affair Has Been Exaggerated you need to forget about Jack. You're asking me to forget about the man I love, the man I want to have babies with. Ever since the infamous Happy Birthday Mr. President incident in Madison Square Garden, it's been widely believed that Marilyn Monroe and President Kennedy were having an ongoing romantic relationship behind closed doors. However, reports imply that they only crossed paths on a few occasions, meaning their quote-unquote liaison was more than likely exaggerated. Granted, it has been speculated that the two did hook up on March 24, 1962 at Bing Crosby's house party in Palm Springs. Outside of that one possible sexual encounter, though, there's not much to support the argument that Monroe and JFK were having a full-fledged affair. Call me Jack. I'm a huge fan of your pictures. <laughs> I'm a fan of yours as well. Of course, there are plenty of conspiracy theories that would suggest otherwise. Number 5. She had several sets of foster parents. No! Mama, mama, mama. 
Behind all the glitz and glamour, Monroe's adult years were littered with hidden sadness and pain. Likewise, her upbringing was also full of hard times. The third child of Gladys Pearl Baker, Monroe lived out much of her early childhood with foster parents Albert and Isla Bolander. We separated Sunday school with us. Lots of times I not only had her and my own son, but I had other children too with me. Gladys eventually decided to move to Hollywood with her daughter, but was later diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. With her mother institutionalized, Monroe became a ward of the state. It's reported that she went through several foster homes and at one point landed in an orphanage. To avoid returning to the orphanage, she married her first husband, James Doherty, at the age of 16. Every baby needs a dad, dad, daddy to keep her worry free. Number four, Jean Adair was almost her screen name. Am I gonna see you later? I'm not too tired. But Evie, I thought we had a date. Look, this tray weighs a ton. Born Norma Jean Mortensen and baptized Norma Jean Baker, Monroe decided to leave her childhood name in the past on her road to stardom. Before settling on Marilyn Monroe, her screen name went through an interesting evolution. During her modeling days, she used the names Jean Norman and Mona Monroe. Upon signing a film contract with 20th Century Fox in 1946, she considered going by Jean Adair. She ultimately went with Marilyn Monroe, which would go on to become a household name. She wouldn't legally change her name until 1956, however, just a few years before her fatal overdose. People die, and people just standing around, don't you care? Number three, she was not plus-sized. I wanna be loved by you, just you, nobody else but you. Monroe was known for her hourglass figure, seemingly possessing curves in all the right places. One of the oldest myths in Hollywood is that she was somewhere between a size 12 and size 16. Contrary to popular belief, Monroe was by no means plus-sized. Standing tall at 5'5", with a 22-inch waist, reports say that she weighed roughly around 118 pounds, which is a normal body mass index by today's standards. Her weight did go up and down over the years due to illness and depression, but she was never even close to being full-figured. Don't believe us? Just measure some of her clothing. The proof lies in the wardrobe, despite what Roseanne Barr claims. As this well. is what I'm, I'm teeny, flabbergasted teeny, tiny, at. The waist you, is You tiny. always hear these stories that, oh, she was a size 60. She, that, no. She's the tiniest exactly. five way. Five foot five. Number two, she was no dumb blonde. Say, they told me you were stupid. You don't sound stupid to me. I can be smart when it's important, but most men don't like it. From gentlemen prefer blondes to how to marry a millionaire, Monroe developed a reputation for playing bombshells that were all blonde and no brain. The bubbly persona she put up in front of paparazzi only fed into this generalization. Appearances can be deceiving, though, as Monroe had a love for literature, with a personal library of over 400 books, and even attended UCLA Extension for Literature. You are very pretty, my dear. Oh. <laughs> Gee, I'd sure like to read all these books. She was even a friend of author Truman Capote, who described her as very, very shy, very insecure, but also very, very bright. Smarter than most people gave her credit for, Monroe's flawless ability to play dumb is just a testament to her incredible acting. Well, you know what they say about girls who wear glasses. What are you talking about? Men aren't attentive to girls who wear glasses. Before we get to our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. I will be laid to rest there as well, uh, in, a, in, a, in a vault right next to hers. How important is that for you? And well, why? I certainly has a, has a very kind of uh, uh, completion notion to it. Number one, she was one of the first women to head a production company. While she's best known for her immortal work on the silver screen, Monroe's achievements behind the scenes are also quite notable. Following in the footsteps of Mary Pickford, Monroe became one of the first women to head her own film production company. Due to a contract dispute with Fox, she was inspired to join forces with photographer Milton Green and form Marilyn Monroe Productions, which she announced at a press conference in 1955. The company only produced one movie, The Prince and the Showgirl which also provided the basis for the 2011 biopic My Week with Marilyn. So are you saying you don't want me to act? Marilyn, will you just try to be sexy? Isn't that what you do? While MMP was short-lived, 
Monroe was still applauded for boldly challenging the studio system and demonstrating the makings of a talented producer. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.